Hey folks. Okay, I haven't updated on the uh, Ream hot water tank situations, how everything's working, how it's all doing. Um, for months, I think we, we got it installed December, uh, what was it, 20, 27th of 2022. Yeah, then we were right into 23. And now we're into 24 yeah so uh december 27 of 22 we i i installed it ended up doing all the pipe work uh, myself insulated my hotline um yeah all the features super easy install uh the electrical simple had that checked over it was very very basic um anyway just a quick update of who if you haven't seen my previous videos i just tied into the furnace output uh, port here, so I just ran that across and that was all legit mounted to the wall solid everything's good. So um, Another gentleman had posted I can't remember his uh, post name whatever his, his ID is He's having issues with the T006 or A006 Which is in the new manual for this model if you have this screen or this faceplate um the new my manual does not tell you anything it tells you that there's something wrong with the temperature that's not what it is it's the previous manual from the previous model where the box is a little bit wider uh, i go over this in um, uh, another video uh, where i talk about some of those issues um, so the previous manual actually goes into the depth if it's going off on a 0006 it's the restriction in your air tube so, um, wow, why is that not focusing? There we go. Um, so I'm helping this gentleman figure this all out. Um, we Mickey Mouse this because they want like $300 to buy their mountable plastic mold uh, to do this. And my son has a 3D printer for us to build it and shape it. It's really difficult. So they're very expensive. So I just bought a 12 inch to a six inch reducer. Six, eight, six. Yeah, six inch. Um, it was hard to find. It only cost me 30 bucks the opening is 10 inch inside with all the veins and the grids but when you're dumping that cold air into the room like i have a 300 square foot room down here 400 square foot and then this room was like 11 degrees in the summertime it was cold so this thing i mean you're pulling all the heat out of the air and i even have the hot air coming from upstairs because they have a wood stove and it pulls it from the upstairs hallway up um up a big hole where old chimney stack used to be or our exhaust stack used to be for the two hot water tanks and the previous furnace so all that's gone um so i pull in that nice hot air and the hotter you can give it the better the conversion rate once it compresses it calls it around the, the tank and then spits all cold air well that cold air is cold like this thing is always cold so if you in the manual it goes through the amount of restriction if you're going to put any ducting on please really take your time studying how much uh, like every bend like i'm actually well past a 90 degree this light is really not handy hmm, i can't fix it right now um see so yeah, i'm actually past a 90 degree so uh, i believe a reducer is worth 20 square feet i go through that in my um, other video but i am a little bit quick on the numbers and I don't remember them right now. So uh, I think this is worth about 20, 20 linear feet of an eight inch tube, I believe, or a six inch tube. And then uh, a 90 degree is worth 10 linear feet. And then your, your linear distance, it, this is flex. So this is a three to one ratio, I believe. So this is worth this two foot rise right here is worth six feet. And then a 90 or 90, and that's worth 10 feet. And then we finally get to my rigid piping, which is right about here. And then that's all rigid all the way down. And that's about, uh, I think I figured that at 12 feet. So t rigid of six inch is 12 feet exact. And then I have my output port outside my terminator, which has a little bend down to it. Uh, and that's worth another 10, 10 linear feet. So my total measurement is 63 linear feet. Uh, even though I only have really 15 feet of run from from here to there. 
I have 63 feet of linear in comparison because of the the turns and the bends and the elbows. Um, so air like gas, like everything, like fuel and liquids, they all, it's fluid dynamics. Anytime you make a turn, you increase the resistance of the flow. So now I'm just doing a little bit of an update here to show this gentleman. Um, here's my build, my son uh, 3D printed this. Uh, we had to seam it here and seam it there because his, his printer's only so big. So that's just sitting on there and the, hot, the, the tank just sucks the air in through there. And we used to have a cardboard box sitting on there. My air filter is still accessible right there. Um, clean that, make sure you check your air filter, follow the monitor. When it tells you, you're probably dirty. So make sure that's kept nice and clean. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I had done some changes. That's what I was making a new video for. So I used to have insulation in my previous video all the way down here. And we used rock wool instead of aluminum foil to wrap all this up, which was like, to me, a great idea. No, it's not a good idea because <laughs> I kept it so insulated. Uh, we were actually getting massive condensation inside the line. So now we're getting none uh, because it's had a, the transition from hot room or warmer room to the super cold air inside the pipe. If it's all insulated all the way back, we were getting some pretty severe condensation. We were dripping off of here and dripping here and dripping up there. It was making its way out. So I took off all this insulation to have some hot air get there. Another major issue I ended up having, even though the terminator outside the wall, it has the, uh, it has like a flapper. So when it's not running, the flapper's closed. Um, when it runs, the flapper opens and, you know, just passively. It, even with the flapper closed and there's no buildup, there's nothing in the way, it's actually closed. The cold air fights its way inside that tube, follows it all the way back and it pushes its way down all the way back inside the compressor. And when I had my temperature probe, I have it hanging here somewhere. Where are you? There she is. So this little guy right here, uh, it just tells me my temperature inside this room down in the basement. It used to be inside of here, which was never accurate because it wasn't really the outside temperature. That's my fresh air return for the furnace. Um, I pulled it out of there because I want to know what it is. Um, I had it hanging inside of here and I could tell what the temperature was. When I hit two degrees Celsius from the cold air pushing its way back down the pipe into here, um, the compressor wouldn't turn on. It was too cold, which like all of this probably doesn't have a, um, a dehumidification or a descale or whatever the heck you want to call it, where it'll like heat itself to defrost, yeah, defrost method with uh, heat pumps. You have a, they'll run in the cold, but then they frost up and they got to run a reverse cycle or something stupid. Um, don't do heat pumps in Canada. It's just a waste of money, um, for outside house heating heat pumps that is. So it was too cold. So the compressor was not turning on, didn't matter what I did. So I was able to run my electrics, but even then the heat coming out of here is so well insulated up this system that the compressor still didn't get warm enough. So I ended up using an infrared heater, sitting on the, sitting it on the um, filing cabinet here, having that infrared heat hit against this piping. And it was able to warm it up enough uh, to get the coil and system inside there all warmed up because then this cold air wasn't, it'd come down at cold and it would warm up before it got here. And eventually this warmed up, it took about a day. Uh, a previous time I had peeled all this off, opened up the system, unscrewed it, and I ran a hairdryer blowing the hot air into the compressor to to warm up that interior sensor there's an interior sensor somewhere in there saying don't turn on you're frozen this does not show you so ream still they do not have really good access to the information of what's going on in your system you can't actually see what the temperature of the water is without going into uh, mode and entry i believe puts me into no that's not it oopsies uh, sorry about the beeps. So slow. Um, there's a way to get in. Maybe it's mode and next. There it is. Yeah. So this, I don't know what that one does, but it doesn't matter. I'll just go down. Shut off valve, which is your shut off valve down on the left there. Uh, it's telling me that it's, I can test it, which I'm not going to do. Evap fan, if I leave it, this will turn on and run the evaporation fan. I believe. I don't know, whatever. 
Oh yeah, this door, there, compressor. So now I'm testing the system. This is how you do it. So mode and next gets you in and you can see now my compressor starting to run, it's powering up, yay, good for me. Give it a second to run for us before I shut it back down. Um, <clears throat> so I couldn't get even the compressor to turn on when this was in cold mode like this. The sensor in here, you can't see the sensor in here from this system, it's really frustrating. So we don't really know what's going on and the app is lame it doesn't do anything it just barely lets you control the system i can go off compressor now that'll turn my lower element on um and it was really kind of interesting i'd be able to turn the element on and i had my emporia energy monitor hooked up on the electrical circuit so i could see the power rise up when that element turned on um upper element this element's now turning on and it would show me the power increase on that circuit um and i think we're out yeah we're back that's it so to get back out of here i think you just push any button oopsies no we don't want to do that let's go back uh, how do we get out of here uh, I think probably you don't have to be a pro there so it gets you in and gets you out just push and hold these two at the same time um so i have mine set to 140 all the time uh, sorry, no, uh, on energy save mode, it works really well. We have a family of five. One of my sons is engaged. His, his uh, fiance is always over. We're uh, home people. We all run business out of the house. Big washing machine, dishes twice a day. Like We're a very busy family. Energy save mode keeps up until three people in a row have had a shower. And this is the 80 gallon model. It will kick on the electrics. It's a little slow. I think it lets it cool down to like 100, 110, somewhere in there. And then it'll kick on the elect uh, electrics. So it really relies on the compressor. Um, so most of the time, totally fine. Not an issue at all. I always run mine at 140. So we just never have an issue with any, we're on well water. We want to make sure all bacteria is killed and all that stuff. Um, I have peaked it to 150 just to see. It's great, fun and all. You can force it to do that, but don't bother. Um, and then at 12 or 1 a.m., I have it go to heat pump and I have it settle down to 120. Now, every now and then, somebody has a shower at like 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. We have some late nights. Uh, and they're like, the water's a little cool. I'm like, yeah, well, that's late. So I do that because we run on solar. Uh, and um, I don't want to be running my batteries too deep overnight. So uh, we're not fully off grid. I can send power back and take power from the utility as well, but I don't want to be wasting my money on you know unnecessary usage. So that's how I have mine set. It's energy save on all three schedules all the way through at 140, and then I go to hybrid mode, uh, heat pump mode to 120, and usually it doesn't run until the morning where I have it turned back on energy save at 1.40 at 8 a.m. So early morning shower people, they're ready to go. Um, so that's how I beat the compressor not turning on is it, too much cold air came back in from that. Um, that's our operations on that. Cleaning your filter is critical. Make sure you do that. You will notice a difference on little lack on how it operates. Um, I could be pulling air in from the room. It's just, why would I not pull from upstairs? I was willing to cut a little uh, 10 by seven hole in my wall um, with an air return to suck air from upstairs in the upper part of the hallway. Cause when we run the fireplace, the, the wood stove, we're getting like 24 to 26 degree air temperature in the hallway. I'd rather pull that in instead of, you know, down here it's like 14, 15 degrees, 16 maybe. Um, so I got 10 more degrees of hot water to work with. So that's probably why my system's working well, because I've heard some people say it never gives me heat. Um, actual continuous hot, hot uh, temperatures without running the electrics. So electrics are a pick. They use a lot of power, 5,000, 5,500 watts. With the compressor running, if you're in high demand mode, you can be pulling 5,700 watts and you could be pulling for an hour. That's a lot of power. So if you're doing that a couple times a day, you're gonna pay for it. Um, most of the time I'm running on heat pump mode. Um, noise wise, it's it's noisy. Uh, our bedroom is right above up here. So when it turns on, it actually, I, I sleep well, but I hear abnormal noises and I wake up well. I'm a pretty good security guard, I guess. <laughs> um, when it turns on and boom, turns on the fan, I hear that, I wake up and uh, you know, it's my alarm clock at eight o'clock in the morning. So I don't even have to set my alarm. 
um, but it transfers through the floor. We don't have insulation in the floor or anything yet, so I want to do that just to reduce that transfer of noise. You don't hear it anywhere else in the house um, other than that. So that's pretty cool. In the room, it's buzzy. I'm glad it's not on right now because you wouldn't be able to hear me very clearly. Um, I'd call it 50 decibels. What else? Um, I'll say um one more time. Um, the insulation, important. Don't wrap it all the way. I probably went way farther than I needed to. If I wrapped it to about here, maybe five feet in, I think that's what the, the idea is. If anybody has an answer to that, that'd be great. Because I could literally pull all this insulation off the rigid and just end it here, which I have done in most other locations of our pipes going outside and stuff like that. Um, and then this big guy is all, oh, this is why I did it. Cause it's insulated all the way. And that's a fresh air return from outside for the furnace. So, uh, again, we're running humidity out with this too, because these things do dehumidify your air. So the air coming out of here is dehumidified as well as like super cold. What else? I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Using the numbers in the manual to really figure out what spec is. If you can run eight inch, uh, reduce it from like a 10 or a 12 to an 8 run 8 you'd be much happier you'll have no issues I'm right under the bar I haven't had the 006 code come back but we were running flex tube all the way down on 6 inch and it had too much resistance with all the little ribs you know every one of these little ribs cause a lot of resistance so as soon as we went to rigid and we were, we've been fine. We haven't had a, a, a overpressurization. And you got to account for the other side as well, that your, your intake uh, also adds into that. So I think our limit is 105. I don't know. Just look in the manual. I, can't, I really don't know the numbers off my head. But um, uh, power wise, I'm using about seven kilowatts a day, five to seven kilowatts total per day. Uh, and again, we're a big family. We use a lot of water. We do bring up well water as well from 300 feet down. So we have the cold water table. We're up in the Edmonton area of Alberta, Canada, you know, that kind of thing. So we have cold water. It's 35 Fahrenheit or something. It's like, it's cold. It's like seven degrees or 10 degrees actual Celsius. Um, so we have a big heating distance to go. Like I'm heating it up to 140 from 35. Um, so if you're anywhere south, you're going to even perform even better. But even with that, we're running the way we run it. Uh, energy save at 140 all day and then a heat pump to 120 um, at 12 or 1 or whenever you go to bed. Just don't have it run. It doesn't need to be on. Um, that has, has us using between 5 and 7. So I've had it pull up to 2200, 22,000 kilowatts, but we were running full energy mode. I'm on solar, so when I have excess, I have fun with it. I've wanted to learn how the system operated. So I pushed it and, you know, 150 degrees from 100 degrees and full electric, no heat pump, and then full high demand with the heat pump running and just seeing how the power usage was. Um, yeah, that's. I think is everything I can share with you guys. Any thoughts, questions, ideas? Yeah, throw a question. If I have it, I'll answer it. If I don't know, I guess we're out of luck. <laughs> cool, right? Have a good day, guys.